Hey there everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share some styling and decorating tips to help give your space that high-end, luxurious feel. But these are all going to be very easy to implement, they're gonna be budget-friendly, and they create a high impact for minimal effort, which we love. So these are just kind of the styling building blocks that I go by when I start decorating a space. So hopefully you'll find them helpful and get some fun decorating inspiration from this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so my first tip is to intend intentionally incorporate contrast. So this is probably one of the number one things that I look for when styling my space. For example, if I have a dark sofa and I am picking out pillows for that sofa, I'm going to always try to source lighter pillows so that I can get that contrast against the dark sofa, which is so much more visually pleasing to the eye, rather than picking out a darker pillow that will ultimately just kind of blend into the sofa. And making sure my spaces have contrast plays a big role in the furniture that I pick. So I always see picking out larger pieces of furniture as like the main base for my rooms and this is really important that that contrast is considered when picking out these items so for example our dining table is a lighter wood so I have light walls like curtains and a lighter faux leather cushion so it was important that I chose darker chairs to give the space a punch of contrast that it needed had I just used you know a light wooden chair the space would have just kind of blended together and not felt very defined find or like it had any depth to it at all. So I personally like bright and airy spaces, but even with a lighter look, anchoring that with darker accents is super important because when your entire space consists of lighter colors, the room tends to fall flat. So when you have punches of dark in that space, it really helps to break up the white and adds depth, but it also still gives off that light and airy feel. So if you prefer a dark and moody space, don't be afraid to pick out some accent items that are lighter in color so you can help those darker pieces really stand out and make a statement. I think a lot of us sometimes gravitate towards either a lighter space or a darker space so we want to pick out everything dark because we want to make that space nice and moody or vice versa. We like a bright and airy space well then let's pick out lots of lighter colored pieces but you really do need to have that dynamic contrast in there for a successful space in my opinion. I also like to use contrast in subtle ways as well so like in our upstairs game room, we have a lot of lighter wood tones and a lot of lighter colors. So I decided to contrast the lighter wood tones with some darker wood tones. Basically, I picked out some accent chairs with some darker wood and also some artwork that had darker wood frames to help tie in the chairs and just give some more of that defining contrast. I always get asked if you can mix wood tones and I say absolutely. I think it's important that you don't have a ton of wood overwhelming a space and that you pick out other materials to kind of balance it out like linen leather stone things like that but yes you can absolutely mix wood tones and I actually think that doing so helps to provide depth and variety to a space another one of my favorite styling tips is to use repetition in your space I've mentioned in past videos that I love to style in groups of three with different items all grouped together but I also use groups of two or use multiple groups of the same product to create a larger impact Act. I've used this trick with storage baskets in my bedroom. I have a taller one and then a shorter one to help fill out a corner to give me a bunch of hidden storage in an aesthetic way. And I just love the way that those varying heights kind of balance out the room. I also like to make sure that the material lends itself to the space. So we have a lot of white going on with the white walls and the white curtains. So it helps to break that up with some warm woven material to help add some texture and subtle neutral contrast. This technique can also be used in an outdoor space with similar planters of varying heights. I love having planter repetition in a garden. I think it just feels so much more whimsical and layered. So if there's an empty corner anywhere on my patio, I love to fill it with spare pots and planters to grow things like herbs or flowers to help add some variety and visual interest to my outdoor space. And you can totally use varying planter heights indoors as well, especially in empty corners. I think it really just helps to liven up the space and add some depth. Another way that I love to use repetition in my space is with stacks of books. 
books always lend themselves to a cozy, homey feel, and I love to style them on shelves and tables to help add an extra layer of height and dimension to my styling. It's nice to use them as little risers or stack some up against the side of a shelf to help create some different lines in decorating. Another way that I see designers do this repetition trick quite frequently is by using a larger vase and then a smaller vase styled together on somewhere like a dining table or a console table. The varying heights are just a high-end way of getting that more minimal look, but still making a stunning visual impact and a statement. And I love using the repetition trick of two items that vary in size, but I also love to repeat the exact same product twice or multiple times, whether it's large storage baskets underneath a coffee table or using the same frame size and sconce repeated multiple times to achieve a larger scale look. Multiple wall hooks also create some practical vertical storage. A lot of times repeating an item over and over creates symmetry and symmetry is one of the main visual tricks that designers use to make a space visually pleasing. And one of the surefire ways to get a luxurious look to your space is by incorporating artwork. And I will argue that artwork is really what sets the entire mood for a space and at least helps to guide the space into the direction that you're trying to go with the aesthetic. So for example, I love a casual earthy feel in my space. So when picking out artwork, I tried to find pieces that emulate that casual earthy feel within the image. So, you know, I would gravitate more towards landscape pieces, you know, things like vintage inspired artwork, images of fields, rolling hills, and artwork that has some sort of water element in it. This really helps to set the mood for my spaces and give off that relaxing feel. It helps everything feel connected to nature. It has a very calming vibe to it, which I love. The furniture and decor that I pick out also help to give off this look, but oftentimes it's the artwork that really helps to give that earthy exclamation point and helps to really solidify the theme of the space. So for example, if you want a more modern and sleek feel to your space, then it might be best to communicate that with an abstract abstract geometric piece, or maybe you want to use your artwork to punctuate your color scheme and make that a focal point, or maybe you love to travel. So you just frame a large map above a sofa. The setting, style, and color of the art piece really make a large statement. And that's why I carefully consider every piece of art before I add it to my space, because it's one of those elements that makes such a dramatic difference. And artwork doesn't have to be expensive. Hobby Lobby has some great prices on larger scale pieces. So does Home Goods, and I will link some of my favorites that are currently in stock below. And I have lots of tutorials on my channel on how to use digital downloads off of Etsy and print them at home for just a couple of dollars. And I will link some of those tutorials below as well. So when you're picking out artwork, definitely carefully consider the color, the theming, the imagery, and how that will lend itself to what you're trying to achieve with your design. All right, so my next tip is to use natural stone and marble decor pieces. Stone and marble are are materials that are very commonly found in places like spas and luxury hotels. So when I can incorporate it into smaller decor pieces around my home, it can help give off a similar feel. And marble is not only a luxurious material, but it is very classic and has literally been used since 5000 BC. So it always gives off a timeless look and is one of those decor materials that will never go out of style. And obviously using marble in more permanent fixtures in your home, things like countertops, tile, and slabs, that can get very expensive very quickly. I think it's very beautiful and it's personally my material of choice, but a more budget-friendly way to incorporate it into a space is just to pick smaller decor pieces that are made of marble. So you're still getting that marble look to your space, but you're not spending thousands on new fixtures. And a lot of times I personally prefer to use it on a smaller scale when decorating because while it's earthy and natural, it can still give off a more cold cold feel. So, you know, I like a casual comfy home. So I like to just sprinkle my decor with marble accents as opposed to those materials being center stage. Now, if you want a more modern sleek feel in your space, you might want to use more marble and stone and focal furniture, something like a side table or a coffee table. I've seen a lot of travertine coffee and console
table tables lately sold on designer sites so that is a very expensive look and you know it just depends on the look you're going for personally in my space i am happy with just little accent pieces here and there things like trays coasters or bowls and i think when you have these little repeated marble stone accents it helps to give off that naturally luxurious feel and you know places like restoration hardware sell these marble accents for hundreds of dollars so it's a very high-end look but i often source these pieces for less than 30 dollars and i will link some of my favorites below in the description box so you guys can check them out as well all right everyone that about wraps up this video i hope that you enjoyed hearing some of my favorite styling tips if you did please give this video a thumbs up it really does help to support the channel and be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss another video i post lots of home decor content lifestyle content travel content so be sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss any more of that and i just want to thank you all so much for watching this video i hope you have a fabulous week and i will see you all in my next one bye